Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Diana, and for those of you who don't know, I was born with HIV. Welcome to my channel, where my goal is to help those who are positive and help educate those who are negative. So if that sounds like your thing, feel free to stick around. Today, I wanted to address a worry we constantly have, and that is this fear of rejection when disclosing our HIV status. We often have in our heads, I'm scared to tell them I have HIV. And to be honest, I totally get it. Like. It's not like I'm begging to tell partners that I'm HIV positive, and even when I do, I don't know if they're going to accept me, reject me, whatever might happen, and it constantly feels like a Russian roulette and you're just trying to figure out what's going to happen here every single time. And then this can induce extreme anxiety, like what if they say no, oh my gosh, what if someone else also says no, what if no one ever says yes to me, am I going to die alone? Stop these thoughts because HIV rejection doesn't happen as often as you think it does, it's most of the time just your mind playing tricks on you. Thus, I wanted to share some tips that I learned along the way that helped me overcome this particular fear of rejection with disclosing your HIV status, and I hope they help you too. The first tip is to figure out the why, as in why are you scared to tell them? What I want you to do here, it's going to be a little bit of an interactive exercise to help you out, is take a piece of paper and pen out, and I want you to write down exactly what aspect of the HIV disclosure worries you the most. The basic concept here is that you really need to understand the origin of the problem before you try to tackle it to find the correct solution. So for example, let's say it's your first time disclosing your HIV status ever and you have no idea what to say. The solution there would be you just need to practice, practice, practice until you get comfortable enough with it that you can go out on your own and disclose your status. That's going to be a tip for later in the video. Or for example, what if someone already rejected you and now you're worried that someone else will reject you? To that, I would say everyone is different and just because one person rejected you doesn't mean that everyone is going to reject you, so try to have an optimistic, positive mindset towards the disclosure. And of course, the list goes on and on and on. You could always think of reasons why you're scared to tell someone you're HIV positive, but in essence, find the problem before you try to tackle it with a good solution to that particular problem. All right, now that we figured out what the problem is, the next step is to face your fear, as in what happens if you don't? Because that's actually more scary and that should be giving you more worries. When you think about the consequences when you don't address your fear of rejection, you begin to realize that not only are you hurting yourself more, but you're also hurting other people around you. So it is not a win-win situation, it's just a lose-lose situation. There are two key examples that come into mind that have personally affected me. The first one is you never really fully open yourself to the idea of love and being vulnerable with someone. When you think about it, when you're too scared to tell someone you're HIV positive, the easier route is just to avoid that situation completely. So maybe you get close to someone to the point where you could tell them you're HIV positive and be physical with them, but hey, you know what's so much easier? Not facing that potential rejection, so I'm just gonna take a step back and avoid that completely. When you start to realize you're actually just self-sabotaging a relationship and you're choosing to end that relationship, you find out that you're missing out on a huge part of life because you will never be able to fully love or be vulnerable with someone. And when you let that sink in a little bit, that's just sad. Like you want to experience life to the fullest and by being too scared to tell someone you're HIV positive, you're never allowing yourself to get there. Now for the second example, you risk putting yourself in a situation where you have to tell them after having sex instead of telling them before. When you think about it, if you're too scared to tell someone before having sex because you're scared to get rejected, only imagine how absolutely terrifying this fear will become when you have to tell them afterwards. Like, you're just digging yourself a grave at this point, so might as well tell them before and address this fear of rejection. So all of this is really working against you and try to wrap your mind around that. So what can you do about it? Get ready for this one because it is a game changer, but it took the most work. Third thing is focus on you and not on HIV. The more attention you put on HIV, the more attention you allow others to put 
that attention on HIV. And this can be especially detrimental if that attention is negative towards HIV. This is truly a huge mindset shift and it's not going to happen overnight. This requires a lot of work on your part to change the way your mind approaches or thinks about you being HIV positive. I think oftentimes, at least at the beginning for me, I always felt like HIV was defining me rather than I was defining what it means to be HIV positive. So the way I think about it is I'm not, hey, look at me, I'm HIV positive, And then, oh, I'm also Diana. No, I'm Diana, look at me. And then I just happen to be HIV positive on the side. Now as another exercise, I want you to take out that same piece of paper and pen and I want you to write down everything that you're proud of that you've accomplished so far, all your dreams, all your aspirations, the person you want to be. And also don't forget who you are currently. Maybe you're incredibly intelligent. Maybe you're funny. Maybe your smile is contagious. Maybe you light up the room when you enter it. You're a loyal friend. You're a loyal, loving partner. Whatever it may be, I want you to take a good, hard look at it and never forget those are the things you are. Let me emphasize this a little bit. You are all of those amazing things and then HIV is just on the side. You're all of this and HIV is just on the side. Because you have all of these redeeming qualities, HIV is left in the dust. Like it's not even a thing to consider when trying to choose you as a life partner because you're just so amazing that who cares if you have HIV or not? That just makes more of you. Like decide, let HIV be something that shapes you and not completely defines you. All right, that's good. We figured out that you're confident, you're focusing on yourself, that's awesome. But there's just a little thing. You still should practice a lot because how you present it is how they will perceive it. Obviously, there's just no way we can change what we have to say. I mean, we cannot avoid the fact that we have HIV and we need to tell our partners about it. I'm sorry, there's just no way to sugarcoat this piece of information. I really wish there was. However, there's a loophole. Guys, always look for loopholes in life. That is, you can control how you present it. So I want you to, to think about this as an example. Let's say you have a presentation in school. Are you just gonna show up the day of and completely wing it and be like, yo guys, check it out, this is my presentation. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure you're gonna be painstakingly working on the phrasing of what you're gonna say, how you want to say the transitions, what words you want to use. Like you're gonna be putting so many hours behind this presentation, like stuck behind the laptop monitor, just because you want to make it the best presentation you could ever do. I want you to think of an HIV disclosure in the same manner. You can't just go into an HIV disclosure and expect the miracle to happen. You have to put some work in and kind of visualize how you want to lead the conversation. Because if you just go in there and wing it, I mean, what are you expecting? Like an A plus performance? Nah, you need to you need to put in some work here, you know? And there's so many options here. You can ask your friends, you can ask your family, you can ask your doctors, you could practice in front of a mirror, you could write down what you wanna say. There's just so many things you could do to practice, practice, practice. Likewise, something else that has worked for me, although I'm not encouraging it for everyone because it's up to your own discretion whether you want to disclose to people whether you're HIV positive or not, but in real life situations, when I already knew that person was probably gonna reject me because of my HIV status, I just said it anyway because I was like, all right, I got nothing to lose. Uh, the only thing I'm gaining from here is experience. And it truly is. Like the more times you disclose your HIV status, the more you realize you gain the experience and you get better and better at it. It's honestly like a skill or talent at this point. Like, I'm not sure if I should put it on my CV or not, you know? Right, anyway, you could have the most amazing HIV disclosure and yet things don't go your way, AKA you just have to accept that rejection is okay and be prepared for the worst possible scenario and learn to accept it. When you think about it, the bare essence of a fear of rejection is really this fear of the unknown, fear of uncertainty, but more importantly, fear of the worst case scenario actually coming to life. So ask yourself this, what is the worst case scenario that could happen when you tell someone you're HIV positive? For me, really the worst case scenario is they reject you. And if you're able to come to terms with that, 
then you're going to be okay. The fear of rejection naturally dissipates away because there is no longer a fear of the worst case scenario. As an additional tip, as a way to protect myself, I would typically emotionally detach myself, not in the sense like, wow, I feel really dead on the inside and like, I don't feel love or anything, but instead of seeing a potential partner as someone where I put all my eggs into the basket for and being like, oh my God, I see the future with him. He could be my husband. Like, ah, I love him, blah, blah, blah. I'd rather see him as like, okay, he's a really cool guy. He's got a lot of potential. He's funny. He's smart. He's genuine. Let's just see where it goes. And you know, it was the moment where he was okay with the HIV status where then I really allowed myself to fall for this guy because before I would just have so many expectations and be so emotionally attached to this person such that if they rejected me, that was such a harder hit on me than if I was just like, okay, it didn't work out, that's fine. Detach your emotions, it's going to work out with someone else. And this was a nice way to console myself to be like, everything will be okay because everything will always be okay. Of course, there's always so much more I want to say on this topic, but I'll save it for another time. Wink, wink. To conclude, if you consider all of these tips together, they should really help you gain more self-confidence and be more sure of yourself such that you radiate your own magnetic energy in a way that HIV isn't even a problem anymore. And in turn, by doing that, the fear of rejection naturally vanishes away. I really hope they help. As always, thank you so much for watching and listening and see you next time. Ciao.